ACDC, one of the most unique and successful bands in the history of rock music. From their humble beginnings in the remote Australian city of Sydney, over a 10-year period, the band's simple, infectious, take-no-prisoners rock sound conquered the world. I think ACDC just gave gimmick-free rock and roll, good gimmick-free rock and roll, that's what they were about, good times, blistering chords, and just everyone having a bloody good time. ACDC wanted the world. They wanted to be big everywhere. They wanted everyone to sort of know who they were. They were on a mission. They had the ambition and they had the determination to get there and to do it and make it work. Set up by brothers Malcolm and Angus Young in the early 70s, the band did not hit their stride until the arrival of legendary frontman Bon Scott, a singer who would become one of rock's most enduring and unique icons. Somebody asked him, are you AC or DC trying to joke? And now I'm the light and the flash in the middle. And that's exactly what he was. He was the fulcrum. He was the focus. He brought the whole thing together. When he arrived, suddenly, flash, everything fitted him. He was a unique. He was one of the uniques. And he had an impishness about him. And he had a twinkle in his eye. Bon always had a twinkle in his eye. And he had that cheeky little smile. He just knew that if you spent some time with him, you were going to have some fun. Bon Scott was the real deal. This is the story of ACDC's ascendance from Sydney pub rockers to a stadium rock phenomenon. The story of one band's determination to become rock and roll legends. In 1963, the Young family from Glasgow, Scotland, relocated to Sydney, a major city on the east coast of Australia. After passing through hotels in the centre of town, the family settled in the suburb of Burwood. It was here that Malcolm Young and younger brother Angus, the driving force behind rock goliath ACDC, grew up. Angus was quickly enrolled in Burwood Public School, where he met Jeff Curtin and his brother David. We first met Angus probably in about 1964, 1965 I think it was, at Burwa Public School. Um, from there we uh, actually used to go to their house after school to, to play. It's only a little house, it was um, near Burwa Police Station. I remember the mother, the mother was a, a really nice lady. We used to um, get up to a bit of mischief on weekends. We used to go to um, Stratfield. We had an old fruit shop down there where we used to go down there and buy fireworks. And I remember one time we went down there, I think we bought a, I don't know, we ended up with a box of cigars anyway. <laughs> I think we all got a bit sick after that, having a few smokes. <laughs> I think we never smoked cigars again after that. On leaving Burwood Public School, both Angus and Malcolm attended the local Ashfield Boys High School. Here they met Steve Armstrong, with whom they formed a strong friendship. I first met Angus and Malcolm at school in 1967, Asheville Boys High School. We used to knock around together on the weekends with a whole group of us and uh, just generally hang out and have a bit of fun. Malcolm as a young uh, boy at school, um, he was looked upon as being the, uh, well I thought he was the pretty boy of the two. Um, I, he was uh, a larrikin, but uh, None of us had uh, hope in hell of getting a girl when Malcolm was around because uh, he got them all, and I mean all. <laughs> Angus. Well, there was a young guy that, um, well, he, he obviously, um, he was a larrikin. That's, that's the word I could use to describe him. Um, he had attitude, and he had an attitude with everybody, but a great guy, a great guy. Um, he... Um, I got the impression that he was always in the shadow of uh, Malcolm, especially where the girls were concerned. But uh, no, Angus had that real attitude and was not frightened to display it to anyone. Through the week they would have to do their uh, guitar lessons after school. We didn't see them after school. But on the weekends, yeah, they would come out, they'd catch the bus, I, I suppose. And uh, they hung around with, uh, there was quite a large group of us. Uh, on the weekends and they blended in very well and they were just like the, you know some of the boys you know just mates and it was great 
The first member of the Young family to make his name in the music business was elder brother George, whose writing partnership with Harry Vander formed the backbone of the band The Easy Beats. This pop combo were having significant success while Malcolm and Angus were youngsters. We were there when uh, uh, Vander and Young sort of came back from overseas when they were the Easy Beats, came back from tour. Um, you know, memories of them playing with our slot car track out the back of their house and having a good time when they came back from tour. And uh, I remember Angus getting a, a nice Jaguar radio which had uh, volume controls on the tyres and the channel changes. And it was a, a beautiful gift that he got amongst other things but that was one that sort of stands out in mind. I've never seen anything like it before. We all knew George was successful as part of the Easy Boots. Uh, I, for one, never got to meet George, but admired their music, loved their music. Uh, we didn't view Angus and Malcolm any differently uh, because George was their older brother. Um, we just treated Angus and Malcolm the same as you or I or anybody else. Along with writing and production partner Harry Vander, George was to take a keen interest in his younger brother's music, both in their youth and in later life. I think George was a, a very a major influence on their career because, and I think their parents were too, because um, uh, they used to say that uh, guitar practice was a must after school, homework first and then guitar practice. Well, it would have been very uh, advantageous to have a brother like uh, George Young uh, because uh, Malcolm and Angus, of course, would have grown up as little kids uh, with a genuine bona fide rock star as a brother and uh, not just that but to have people like Stevie Wright coming around to the house and uh, uh, all the other members of, of the Easy Beats uh, was just probably a normal way of life. Um, also uh, as far as ambition is concerned uh, it wouldn't have been foreign to them to have great ambitions because they'd seen it uh, already demonstrated with, uh, with George Young. Um, so it would have been very very important uh, in, the, in the formative years for sure. There's, there's quite an age gap between George Young and Angus and Malcolm Young. George had had success in the 60s with the Easy Beats, Friday on My Mind. We're working with Harry Vander, whom he has formed a very successful production partnership with. And for Angus and Malcolm growing up and looking up to a brother, an older brother, considerably older brother, albeit but still a sibling, who was already immersed in the music business, knew about the insights of the music business, gave them two key advantages. First of all, it gave them someone who encouraged them and didn't knock them down, as might have happened had they come from a family where nobody had had success as a musician. Secondly, it showed them the pitfalls, which was also quite crucial, because Malcolm especially is very shrewd. He's always been very much about keep an eye on everything, know where the money's going, make sure you take every step and every advantage going. So George Young's success, not just musically, but also in terms of the business, had a huge effect on Angus and Malcolm, and I think positively. Malcolm soon joined his first band, the creatively named Velvet Underground. They began playing at several low-key gigs across Sydney. I think for any successful musician or anyone successful in life, your first break is the most important. It gets you on route, gets you on the way. And for a musician, be it Malcolm Young, be it Angus Young, be it whoever, to get in the band and get out and play shows and tour proves one of two things. You've either got it or you haven't. And going on stage at an early age for Malcolm with the Velvet Underground, albeit it didn't have success particularly, but it was successful for Malcolm because it proved to him he could do it. He could get up there on stage and make things happen. So I think the spark was lit and once the fire was burning, there was no way it was ever going to be put out. Malcolm lost interest in the Australian Velvets and soon began forming his own band. Colin Burgess, previously the drummer for successful Australian band The Masters Apprentices, was one of the first to join. Well, I first got involved with ACDC oh, around about 73, I think it was. Yes, yeah, 73. Uh, before Christmas. And I had left a band called The Masters Apprentices earlier on, which has had lots of hits and so on and so and that's how I said, this guy called Alan Kissack rang me up and said, look, uh, Malcolm Young wants to form a band. And I said, sure. Well, I'm, I didn't, at the time, I didn't even know who Malcolm Young was, but as it goes down the line, it was George Young's brother, and he used to be in the years of it's George and Harry. And so he said, come along for a rehearsal and see what you think. So I said, yeah, okay. So I went along and 
great, sounded great. As a matter of fact, um, uh, Malcolm played absolutely fantastic guitar because it was just a three-piece band and it was at the time. Colin and bassist Larry Van Crete were in, and after the successful jam, the three-piece began looking for a singer. Enter Dave Evans. Well, I first met Malcolm Young uh, after I answered an ad in the uh, uh, Sydney Morning Herald. I had heard of uh, Malcolm before. Uh, he'd been in uh, a band called Velvet Underground, which was a, a Sydney band. Um, but he left the band uh, when I joined as singer. Uh, so I'd heard about Malcolm, and uh, um, but then Bel Velvet Underground broke up, and um, uh, that's that's why I answered the ad in the paper. And uh, when the voice on the other end of the phone asked who it was, I said Dave Evans, and he went, oh, it's Malcolm Young. He heard about me, of course, uh, from the boys in Velvet Underground, and uh, he said, look. Um, uh, I've got a couple of guys here, um, I'm forming a, a rock band, uh, come over and we'll have a jam. Um, so that's what happened, I went over to Newtown uh, in Sydney and uh, um, I met the other two boys, uh, uh, one was Colin Burgess uh, on drums, uh, he'd been a, a big star with uh, the Masters Apprentices uh, in the 60s. Um, and uh, also Larry Van Crete, I, I didn't really know him. Um, we jammed and it was great. We all shook hands and uh, um, we had a band. A week later, Malcolm introduced a fifth and final member to the band. After we'd formed the band, Malcolm asked if Angus could audition for us. So Angus then auditioned for us. Um, we still didn't have a name yet, by the way, the band. Uh, he auditioned for us and uh, of course there was no problem, you know, he was a good player, same as Malcolm and it was really a 